hello everyone and welcome to this uh, video um, today I'll show you uh, how you can uh, work with HUD in OpenGL so um, the HUD elements are basic necessity of every versatile 3d game and you need to have them into your game in your game um, like uh, you need uh, you might need them to keep track of the scores of the player or um, the lives of the player and also in the uh, first person shooter games um, the crosshairs are also a uh, HUD element so I'll show you here um, a technique of drawing the HUD elements that uh, this might not be the best but this works quite fine for me uh, as I'm uh, creating this game and I needed HUD elements so I did a bit, a bit of research and I found this way out and uh, this is pretty cool and most of the people do it this way so this is a HUD element on the top left corner of the screen uh, you can see that uh, uh, the rest of the 3D scene uh, does not uh, affect it in any way. It is drawn over all of your other scene. Irrespective of what is drawn on your screen, other 3D scene, uh, it does not change its place. So like I can um, show the score of the player at this element because this will stay at this point uh, uh, um, regardless of uh, other my other transformations, 3D transformation going on in the scene um, and so my FPS uh, currently while recording might be a bit low this is quite laggy because uh, I'm not actually using a game recording uh, game recorder and just this is just a dif display recording device so it's a bit laggy uh, so we don't uh, will not worry about this right now um, so uh, mm, I'm actually uh, this is actually quad with, on which I'm mapping this texture this bitmap texture and so it is drawn at this point so uh, now I'll show you how you can draw this so I've actually made a list of the steps uh, quite short list um, so uh, you can uh, so these are steps you need to follow to draw your HUD element this uh, should look quite simple to you uh, this is a bit more complex than this you just need a bit of knowledge about the projection metrics and the model view metrics in OpenGL to do this so uh, for, uh, the head element ha has to be drawn after you have finished drawing your 3D scene. So it is to be drawn over your 3D scene and before you swap the buffers. Because uh, you before you render your frame, the head element has to be drawn. So quite as simple as that. Uh, so now uh, the steps uh, which you need to follow to draw the HUD elements. Here is the list. Now this is quite a considerable size of a list uh, so you first need to switch to 2d projection after you have drawn your 3d scene you have drawn your 3d scene in your 3d projection then you can switch to 2d projection and then you can draw the hd elements and then switch back to your 3d projection so that it does not affect the rest of the game so any changes that take place inside this block are retrieved because if this uh, changes uh, are not retrieved then in the next frame the 3d scene uh, might not be 3d it might be drawn to a 2d projection matrix or any other um, unhandled uh, any other exceptions or unhandled stuff may occur um, so uh, first we'll switch to 2d projection and there there's a list of the steps so first switch to projection matrix um, you should know how to do that uh, using the gl matrix mode function uh, first go to the projection matrix because we have currently finished drawing the 3d scene and so we uh, we are in the uh, model view matrix so first go to the projection matrix and save the state of the projection matrix because we are going to change the state to the 2d projection so we need to save the 3d state which it is here right now so we'll first save it and then we'll reset the state of the projection matrix and now we'll uh, set a 2d projection matrix using gl blue ortho 2d or gl ortho any of these two functions uh, so now we are in the 2d projection matrix and now to draw we uh, draw the element we first need to go to the model view matrix so you first switch to the model view matrix um, and then uh, save its state because uh, all the transformations in the 3d scene which were here need to be saved uh, for your next frame um, so you just need to do this so that uh, your game may not give unexpected results and then reset the uh, model view matrix using GLO identity, identity because we need to start drawing the HUD from scratch. So now, uh, so the advantage of drawing the HUD onto a 2D projection is that you, uh, it, it is easy to detect the mouse position. So if you set the size of your window, uh, size uh, the coordinates of your 2d projection to the si equal to the size of the window it will be quite a lot uh, easy to 
detect the position of the mouse pointer or the mouse clicks although I'm not going to show that here so now you're in the 2d uh, projection you can now draw the HUD element a quad or whatever the 2d stuff uh, and then you now need to switch back to 3d projection after you have finished drawing it so this will be retained and you've seen so this is drawn inside the 2d matrix um, so to switch back to the 3d projection you first need to switch to projection matrix you are in the model view matrix so now you need to retrieve the matrix state using glpop matrix so this will just retrieve the state which was at this point when it was saved so it was a 3d projection so now the 3d projection matrix will be retrieved after you have drawn the hud uh, using the glpop matrix then similar thing you need to do for the model view matrix switch to the model view matrix and then pop matrix so the state of the matrix which was at this point the same will be retrieved at this point so now uh, so basically in this block uh, outside this blocks the the state of the matrix matrices here is same as it is here all the changes that take place inside this are retrieved so this was the steps and now and without wasting any time uh, we'll get started with coding and so i have removed all the code that i was using to draw the hud element um, except uh, this the geometry of the HUD and so you can uh, I will call this function when I need to draw the quad which contains the which contains this texture mapped onto it um, so this is just the uh, geometry of the quad and this is just loading the texture um, I kept this function in a separate file because uh, I was using a texture and uh, I've already set the stuff to load um, textures the function and stuff to uh, inside this file uh, although I'm using uh, loading the textures from using this PMP loader.cpp file um, for which you can find the tutorial on my channel um, if you want to know how to load bitmap textures into OpenGL um, and uh, so this is nothing more than just the geometry I'm using 2D vertices so I'll just call this function when I need to draw all the, um, all the uh, main part will take place here so uh, I can uh, I'll just uh, run the game and show to you that um, no hard element here I just removed the stuff which I was using to do that uh, so I'll redefine it now so um, first we need to know the place where we have to do the stuff so I told you before rendering the frame and after drawing the 3d scene so this is my display callback I'm using LUT so there's the display callback and uh, so I'm drawing the 3d scene here uh, and before swapping the buffer it means rendering the frame onto the screen. I'll draw the 2d HUD. So I'll mark this point uh, And now I'll define a function named Draw HUD so this function will be used to draw the HUD element now uh, the all the HUD elements and so all the transformations and the, the changes in the projection matrix will take take place inside this function. So I'll call this function from here um, and so now we'll start coding inside the function uh, so first step will be setting a 2g projection matrix so that we can draw it onto the screen um, because this so um, we'll use a gl matrix mode function and gl uh, so we'll switch to projection matrix so you should know how to do this uh, so we'll switch to the gl projection matrix uh, and so now we are in the projection matrix so Currently the projection is 3D and now we, uh, we need to retrieve that at the end, end of this function so that it does not create any changes and so we do not get any unexpected results. So we'll save the state of the matrix using the GL push matrix function. So we have saved the 3D state of the matrix and now we can change it. Uh, so, so first uh, we'll reset it using GL lower entity before uh, creating a new 2D projection matrix and now we'll create a projection matrix I'll use the glue or tow 2d function you can use GL or tow but uh, for 2d this function um, does the job quite well uh, so I'll set now an orthographic projection in which the origin is the top left corner of the screen uh, and the screen is the first quadrant it means the both X and Y values are positive um, the both X and Y positive values lie inside the screen um, and so I'll set the width and height both values of the screen to uh, 
single unit and so to draw elements inside the screen uh, we'll use the values lesser than one uh, means the floating uh, we have to use floating points for that uh, so just uh, I'll set the values accordingly although you can uh, although it will be more comfortable if you set the values of the screen width and height according uh, according to the resolution of your games game window so that it'll be easier to d detect mouse clicks but I'm not going to uh, go that far in this video tutorial you can do that yourself uh, so when you're uh, so in the probably the reshape, reshape callback you get the width and height of the screen so you can use this to set the projection metrics but I'll not worry about this I'll just I'll just show you simplest what we can do so I'll just set the values accordingly that I just said the simple width and height both one um, so now we have a 2d projection now I can go to the model view metrics to start drawing uh, the HED element here uh, but in the model view metrics we first need to reset it but before resetting uh, before making any changes to the model view metrics uh, we need to save its state so that uh, we can retrieve it later to um, avoid the un uh, unexpected results so simple push met push metrics uh, will push metrics and then load an entity and reset it um, so we have now uh, we now have a ready uh, 2D projection matrix to draw stuff on to draw stuff onto the screen. So now we can draw the HED element, the function for which lies here. So this will draw the geometry. So I'll just call this function. So this will draw the HED element. But we have not finished yet. We need to switch back to the 3D projection because if we do not do that, uh, the if we if I compile and run the game now, I'll just get my 3D scene rendered onto a 2D projection matrix. So uh, the whole scene will be 2D and there will be no use of that because we are here in this function um, switching to the uh, 2D metrics and we are not going back to the 3D metrics unless this reshape callback is called so this is not called for each frame so we'll, we will get stuck in the 2D projection metrics and everything else will also be drawn in the 2D so we are drawing the HUD in the 2D and after we have finished drawing we have finished our work uh, then we can go back to the metrics projection metrics at the state of it which was before uh, drawing the HUD element so this function should not change anything in the whole applications in the whole application so the changes it makes are to be retrieved and are to be undone all of those so um, we have already saved the state of the 3D metric so we can now uh, use the okay, we first need to go to the projection matrix to pop its state retrieve its state and uh, now I, I can call the GL pop matrix function to retrieve its state similar thing um, I before resetting the model view matrix I pushed it its state I saved it so similar thing I can do uh, with the model view matrix and so we are done here and one more thing I'll tell you is that uh, you uh, if you're getting still getting some un unexpected results that uh, th that might be because uh, you're drawing your scene uh, in your scene you're drawing the HUD element and uh, your depth testing is enabled so if any other object comes before that although this is not possible but still you can uh, use that to avoid any unexpected results so you can actually what you can do is you can disable depth testing at the here at the starting of this function and enable it at the end but I'm using a 2d projection and I'm drawing everything at the zero value of z-axis so I do not think that any object will be drawn before that so uh, so I am not disabling the depth testing right now but if you get any unexpected result you can try that that might solve your problem but uh, this works here so I'll just compile and run and show you the HUD element so there, there it is, this texture mapped onto a quad, the HUD element, and it has been drawn perfectly as I wanted it to, at the desired position on the screen. So basically, uh, in the 3D projection, um, the 2D projection is regardless of the 3D projection which we were using earlier. So we switched to 2D projection and this is the origin, and this is one value of x-axis, and one value of y-axis, and this point is 
1 comma 1 at uh, the bottom right point here this is 1 comma 1 and so in this projection we are drawing this HUD element using this geometry here you can see the vertices all the, all of them are 2d means the z axis uh, value of the z axis is 0 for all of them um, that's why I was telling you that you don't um, you do not need to disable the depth testing uh, because this is drawn at the zero value of z axis and this will be shown so um, you can see that uh, this position of it does not change uh, it just stays at its position irrespective of the rest of the transformations of the 3d matrix um, so this is all for this video and um, also, uh, and uh, and this game which I used to show you here uh, I'm I'm working on it currently and I am posting the de weekly development logs in which I talk about the code which I'm writing for this game and weekly uh, and the progress that I'm making although I promised uh, weekly development logs but it seems that um, uh, I have other quite a lot of work to do so I'll just post them whenever I have made a considerable considerable amount of progress in the game so the last development log was up probably three weeks ago and the next one will be coming next week probably and I'm uh, currently uh, working on some more uh, models in the scene so I'll add them and come up with the development log uh, and then um, I in the seventh part of the snake game tutorial series which I was making um uh, will also be up by the next week probably or the next to next week um, uh, all, uh, and I think the seventh part might be the last part and uh, I'll finish the game in that uh, so just stay tuned and I'll and the video will be up soon uh, and so this is all for this video and thanks for watching